You're listening to English Go podcast. We'll get started right after this. Wow, it is Wednesday, and I'm recording an episode on Wednesday for the first time in a long time. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm finally getting used to the、uh, like the change between、um, English time and Japanese time. Who knows? Anyway,、uh, recently I went driving in Japan, and it was a bit. Unexpected, and it was a bit sudden. We'd agreed to go out to a shopping centre, and we were going to go by car. And all of this I knew about and I understood, you know.、Uh, but then, just as we were leaving the the flat,、um, my mother-in-law said, "Would you like to drive?" And、uh, I thought, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go. I, I have driven in Japan before,、um, on quite a few occasions actually, and、uh, the sort of like the longest journey I've ever been on was all the way from Hiroshima to Ehime, which、um, I don't know is that like two hours, three hours? I'm not sure. It seemed to take a long time anyway, and、uh, you have to go across all these. Bridges that cross over lots and lots of islands. I think it was called Shimanami Kaido.、Um, but anyway, that was a that was a good journey. But I haven't driven in Japan for a very very long time,、um, like over I don't know how many years, eight years or something like that. So it was a bit of a a surprise that I was driving all of a sudden. And、um, in Japan, they drive on the left side of the road. Which is fine. We also drive on the left side of the road in England too, so no difference there.、Um, what is different, though, I would say, is the roads. The roads are very different to English roads. They're a lot narrower, and they're a lot more what's like disorganized. I think sometimes there are pavements. Sometimes there are no pavements. Sometimes the road can be wide. Sometimes it's narrow. Sometimes you have to take a really tight corner.、Um, sometimes the cyclists that are really like there's, there's not much space for the the、uh, the cyclists and the cars sometimes, so they come really close to you.、Um, so it feels like there's a a lot more hazards on the roads in Japan. I mean, I guess it depends what road you're on. If you're driving on a, a motorway,、um, then that's a different experience. But the little, like smaller roads around towns, I'd say it feels like there's lots of hazards all the time, and some of the rules are a little different.、Um, like I think there's some something where you you the lights are on green, and you you're turning around a corner, but then there's someone crossing a road. And you have to stop for them.、Uh, we don't have that rule in England because you're not allowed to cross.、Um, like the 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 pedestrian, the person walking along the road, they have to wait、uh, until the lights change before they can cross the road. So there's no rule like that.、Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd have to get that use of that rule. Otherwise, I just sort of wonder what's this person doing in the road. <laughs> I might run them over.、Um, But yeah, I think normally in England, cars have what's called right of way. So they they have like、um, what they have right over a human. What it's like? I'm trying to say they're like the most important things、um, in the road. They have priority. So at first it's cars, and、um, I don't know bikes or something. But yeah, humans. Sh- Should not be in the road. You shouldn't be walking in the road、um, unless you know you're at traffic lights or something, and they let you. You know it's on green, so you can walk across the road. But I think over here there are. It's weird because there are times when you're in the road and a car has to stop for you,、um, which is I don't know. It's a weird feeling when I'm crossing a road. When I'm walking across a road, and I can see, and there's like a car coming around the corner, and it's. It's slowing down, but you sort of think, has that person seen me? Has the driver seen me, or is he going to hit me?、Um, 
So it is a bit of a weird feeling, and I'm still not getting used to that feeling. It just it just doesn't happen in England. If a car's waiting at traffic lights and you're crossing the road, then you know the car just doesn't start coming around the corner. Um, obviously, if you cross the road and you're not supposed to, then the car will come. <laughs> you know, if, if you if you cross at the wrong time, then you've got to be very careful. Don't don't get run over, please. Um, but yeah, a few differences, a few differences, and of course, all the signs are different. Um, and then the speed is different as well, because we usually have um, miles per hour in England. So most roads are 30 miles per hour. And then if there's maybe no housing around, um, then it, it might go up to 40 miles per hour. And then we have like these things called dual carriageways. And um, they are 60 or 70 sometimes then our motorways are 70 miles per hour um and that's like the fastest speed you can go in england 70 miles per hour i'm not really sure about um i think i have a feeling that the the fastest speed you're supposed to go in japan is something like 60 kilometers per hour which is really slow i mean crazy speeds it feels like you're walking on a road it's so slow um and then i've noticed I think like most roads seem to be 40 kilometers per hour, um, which is a little slow. Um, So 40 kilometers per hour is about 25 miles per hour. So if I'm driving at 25 miles per hour in England, it does feel slow. Um, And like I said, most roads are 30 and 30 miles per hour, that's 48 about 48 kilometers per hour. So yeah, that's a whole eight kilometers slower um, that everyone seems to drive in Japan. So it's um, it's a bit weird. But the car I was in was a really small car, like a lightweight car called a K car. It's like a certain, what, style of car. It's a classification of car. Um it just means there's lots of like restrictions on the size and the weight and the size of the engine. Uh, so they're really small, really lightweight. And I suppose when you're driving in those cars at a slow speed, it doesn't feel as slow. It doesn't feel too slow, I, I think. But like if I was in a big car, like a reg, like a normal, and I don't know, even something like a mini, like a mini Cooper, and I was doing those kind of speeds, it would feel really slow, definitely. Um, but anyway, that's not the that's not the the most difficult thing that I find about driving in Japan. The hardest thing, the really the thing that I actually find quite annoying, is lots of cars. Almost all the cars are automatic cars, and I don't drive automatic cars. I only drive manual cars, and um, I find it really really hard driving an automatic car. Now, you would think that I would find it easier because there's less work to do, isn't there? You just put your foot down on the on the, the acceleration pedal, on the accelerator, and that's all you have to do. You don't have to change gears. You don't have to use a clutch. Um, but no, it is so much harder for me because I'm, I'm used to listening to the engine. I'm used to getting feedback from the engine. And I know, like... When I want to change gear and I tell the car, I want to change gear now, you know, and I change the gear myself. But it's like, I don't, I really don't like automatic cars. And the reason, the reason I don't like them is because they're reactive instead of proactive. Um, That's a bit difficult to explain, perhaps. But like, uh, when I'm driving, when I'm driving a manual car, let's say I can see a hill coming up. So I can change down gear before I get to the hill. So I can, I'm looking at the road ahead and I adjust the gear based upon what I can see. So that's proactive. So, you know, I see something and I respond to it before it comes. But with automatic cars, they can't do that. So you start going up the hill And then the car gets slower and slower and slower. And then it's like, 
oh, we're going up a hill. I'll have to change down a gear. And then it changes down. And it just feels wrong. It's like, I just wish I could tell the car, please, just, um, you know, select this gear or select this gear. And uh, I don't know, something about it, I just find it really hard to drive and really confusing. And I don't know if, I, if I'm going to get used to it. So, like, I... I on this drive we went on, it was about a, I don't know, maybe 20 minute drive. And I drove to the shopping center, but on the way back, I didn't drive. It's like, <laughs> it, uh, I just had enough. It's like, no, nah, this isn't driving. This isn't fun. This is just, um, I don't like it. Sorry. So, uh, I don't know. I suppose I should keep trying keep practicing with an automatic car and maybe I'll get used to it. I don't think I'll ever like it, but perhaps I can get to the point where it doesn't feel so strange anymore. Um, I don't know. We shall have to see. I would quite like to buy my own car over here. Um, so that will probably be automatic. I would love to buy a manual car. My wife can't drive a manual car. And she doesn't want to learn how to drive a manual car. Even if I tell her, I think they're better. <laughs> she doesn't care. She just wants an automatic car. So mm, I have a feeling we'll probably end up with an automatic car if we buy our own car. So uh, yeah, I should try and get used to them. But I just want to go back to England. I just want to drive on English roads. And I want an English car to drive in. It's just, um, it's just what I know. It's what I'm used to. It's what I'm comfortable with. Sometimes it's nice to, um, I don't know, to do what, do what you're used to, do what you're comfortable with, I guess. But yeah, new experience. So um, I need to stick with it. I need to push on, and uh, just try and get used to this automatic car, I guess. Anyway, until next time, I hope you have a lovely day, and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to English Go Podcast. If you'd like to listen ad-free, listen to extra bonus episodes, or read the transcripts of these episodes, then please consider supporting this podcast at patreon.com forward slash English Go. Thank you.